coming up. She's so Emotions are high as I'm back on the road for another rescue. I don't like this. It's tough. And it's my last day as a volunteer. My goodness, the time has absolutely flown by. Flory, will you have me back? Yeah. Oh, I think that's a definite yes. Dogs Trust are committed to the rescue and welfare of man's best friend, and they are constantly taking needy dogs into their care. Sorry, dumped this dog in the English today. I'll bring him up here. Ireland has a serious overbreeding problem, and many dogs are found stray and abandoned. At any one time, there can be over 200 dogs living in the centre. Abandoned canines come in from a variety of sources other welfare charities and private handovers. However, the majority of the animals they provide shelter for are from local authority pounds. Are you surprised at the different breeds of dogs that you're seeing in pounds or would nothing surprise you at this stage? Do you know, at this stage, nothing surprises me. It really doesn't. All different breeds, all shapes and sizes that I could be collecting. With a constant flow of dogs going through Irish pounds, the charity travel the length and breadth of the country trying to help as many dogs as they can care for. We're leaving two behind and one of them is, is, is the big shepherd. What do you mean we're leaving two behind? There's two dogs that we can't take. Can't Why not? That we haven't got the space. So how many dogs are you taking? Six? Six and there's eight in there. Irish Pounds work closely with many animal rescue groups to rehome dogs that would formerly have been put to sleep. So Stray or lost dogs are kept for five days to allow their owner to reclaim. After that time, they're made available for rehoming to the general public or released to animal rescue charities. Ah, oh, God. a little bit of stress, actually. You can see he's panting. Yeah. Is that a sign of stress, just the panting? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's totally a sign of stress. Does he look like he's been handled before? Um, he, he, it looks like he's been on leave before, yeah. He certainly okay. does. So he could be somebody's pet. The condition of him, it would suggest that he's is definitely someone else's pet. Oh, God. Hey. Now this one, uh, his condition is a little bit bad, but it's only because he's shedding his hair. He's so frightened. I mean, I know. Oh, yeah, fella. You know, they, they just don't Damn know what's happening. You know, they have Look no at... idea what's going on. They really don't. Uh, to be honest with you, he, he's actually craving attention. He wants me to pet him and rub him because he hasn't had it in a while. One by one, Ian carefully and quickly tries to get all of the dogs into the ambulance but he's particularly concerned about one dog. He's very this scared. She's a little bit underweight. Just mind yourself, because she is a little bit rigid. Yeah, um, OK. So we don't know what she's liable to do. Oh, God. Now, he's a little shut down, this one is. They don't know me. The, the, the situation is that they've been in there for the past five days and screaming dogs in their face all, all the time. Like they're, they're, they're so, um, they've just shut down, they have. Of her dogs. Yeah, the last one is, is the collie. And the collie, just from the body language, yeah. you're a bit concerned. The dog is not making eye contact, very rigid. The dog is liable to do anything. She's as stiff as a board. Her ears are all pinned back. She's oh, not comfortable at all. And is that sometimes when the dog can be reactive and that's when you're sort of in a bit that's of danger? It, that's, that's primarily when I'm in a lot of danger. Like, the dog could easily turn on me. With the dogs that we can facilitate today safely secured, there are still two left behind. I went in to see them. Oh my God. You'd love to take all the dogs, you know? You would, actually. There's a reason, the reasons behind we can't take this fella here is either that we don't have the space back in, back in office or he hasn't been here for his five days yet. And by law, we can't touch the dogs until they've been here for they five days. They have to be here for they five days. They have to be here for five days. There he is down there. Hiya. Stray or abandoned dogs are at risk of being put to sleep if they are not claimed within five days. So the team go to every effort to take in as many dogs as they can responsibly care for and rehome at any one time. 
It's a sad part of the job when the team can't take all the dogs from the pound. It's hard to leave any behind. All dogs and puppies they take into their care are neutered, microchipped and vaccinated, so they can be quickly rehomed. Two of the oldest dogs at the centre are Bran and Jed, who have recently arrived from a pound rescue. It's sad when you see an older dog come in because a lot of people want the puppies and the younger dogs. Yeah, I like people. I don't think people realise like the benefits of having an older dog. Like having an older dog, they're generally like these lads are house trained. They're also kind of set in their way, so they're very dog friendly. You know what you're getting. Whereas puppies, you kind of you could get a dog and the ch personality could change over time. So having an older dog, we can tell kind of almost what they're going to be like in the house. They're so gentle. You know, they've good manners. Yeah. And do we have an age on them? Old. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think by, you know, they're, they're missing a few teeth and just their condition. Yeah, I never forgot to ask Roberta. In fairness to Bran, he's got good energy in him. A lot of old dogs do. Like, they kind of, some of them can have their mind over body a lot of the time. They want to do more than they probably should. Yeah, well, fellas, come on. Another old age dog who recently arrived at the centre has captured the hearts of all of the staff, and I'm really looking forward to meeting her. Sophia came to us just over a month ago from one of the local dog pounds. They thought she might be pregnant because she had a very rotund abdomen. She was very tense when the vet was um, palpating her stomach there. So um, it turns out that she was only in heat and that means she got her behaviour assessment, her clean bill of health from the vets and now she can be adopted. Older dogs are often the perfect match for a prospective adopter. And today I'm joining John to get Sophia ready to meet her new owners. She's such a placid little dog. Yeah, she's real placid. Real placid. She's the type of dog like you'd be sitting at home and she'd sit in your lap and she'd be quite content. She's you know? the chilled out type of dog yeah, here. She really is. For me, John, I love to see an old dog at home. And I know the particular owner chose her because of her nature. Yeah. And like Sophia will suit this owner. With another adoption day in full swing, it's good news for Sophia as her new family have come to bring her home. I believed you worked with Dogs Trust because you wanted a particular type of dog to work with you and to work with Bernard. Yeah, we did, Chef. We wanted a nice, quiet dog. <laughs> but but, but uh, having a nice dog is very therapeutic for Bernard. Really? Very yeah. therapeutic because yeah. if he gets up, he can just uh, pet the dog. He <laughs> does love dogs. Mm. And the moment has arrived. Oh, she's coming. Hello, yeah. over here. Oh, there you go. Oh. Oh, oh, yeah. Today. Oh, yeah. She's bored. Who will we hand over the reins to? There you are. Sorry. Thank there you, you are, Mr. Shields. <laughs> Hello. It's a happy tale for Sophia. But sadly, the veterinary team have made a shocking discovery about one of the oldest dogs at the centre. I met up with veterinary nurse Jenny to find out more about Bran's condition. We notice he's a little bit sore around his right eye, and you can see he's. He looks a little bit different. Um, he's got no vision in that eye at all, so we decided to take some x-rays to see if there's anything else going on. So we had some shocking results, to say the least. Um, he's obviously, he's been shot in the head. He's got four pellets in his skull. Yeah, so it was quite nasty. So that's why he wasn't feeling 100%. Yeah, it would have happened a long, long time ago. And it would have been at close range as well, because they're quite deep. Right in here. So if you can see them, so you can see on here, obviously that's where his right eye is, so that's what the problem was there. And uh, all around you can see them. On his head. Yeah, yeah, pretty nasty. Like and down on his neck as well. When you think of it, mm -hmm. awful, the suffering he must have went through. An awful lot. But he's got through it and he's here now. But um, he's not showing any signs now, he's on pain relief and that, so he's not showing any signs of discomfort, so. He looks nice and bright and bubbly. Have you noticed mm -hmm. a difference since you start getting the pain medication yeah, and clearing up the kettle cough? Definitely. He, he was a little bit fearful in that, which is very understandable. Um, but since now he's pain free, he's doing so much better. With the vet team keeping a close eye on Bran, he is well on the road to recovery. Another dog just starting out on his rehabilitation journey is Hanno. After a major operation, he is allowed to go for his very first walk. You're one of the veterinary assistants. He's had major surgery. Yeah, major back surgery. Um, flip this, he had. So, um, yeah, couldn't walk at all. Just dragging the back legs um, behind him when he came into us. Total turnaround. Couldn't even go to the toilet on his own. Look at him now. 
You can see his back surgery is very, very new. Yeah, lots of stitches there. God love him. With Hanno doing so well, he's brought to the vet for a post-operative checkup. But still, you can feel it's quite tender underneath. Okay, okay, so it's still not 100%. Okay. So we still got a long way to go, mister. Good boy. What's happened to him? What? So basically, with Hanno, he had um, a prolapse of his disc. So he was lucky he got it fixed when he did. And he was brought into you in that condition? Yeah, he was brought into us one evening. Um, he was at the gates. And Kat, our manager, went up and took him in and brought him straight down to our local vets because we weren't actually here. And then he was sent straight over to UCD. And they did um, his spinal surgery then. It was emergency surgery that he had. He had the actual prolapse disc removed because it was compressing on the spinal cord, which is causing him to be paralysed, basically. Even if it had been the next day, he could have been paralysed for life. So he's a very lucky boy. He thinks he feels great because <laughs> he's on pain relief. But the thing is, he's not 100%. You know, with the spine, a lot, a lot of things can go wrong. To ensure he fully recovers, the team have a rehabilitation plan to help him get back on his paws. We're doing a lot of physio with Hanno, um, so we do some exercises where we'll get his back legs and we'll retract them backwards like this, and he'll um, put them, basically we want him to put them back into the right position, and that's working with nerve damage, um, so he knows when his feet are in um, the right or the wrong position. We do a lot of weight work with him as well, so we'll do this, we'll make him go down like this. We'll do weight changes where we'll go from left to right. It's not anything too pressurised. We don't want to hurt him or anything like that. It's just basically to work up the strength in his back after he's after everything that he's been through. Um, so we'll do that about three to five times a day. We're going to work on um, bringing his walks up as well, um, just basically to strengthen him. Well done, Hanno. With his physio done for the day, things are looking up for this brave little dog. This unique charity prioritises the welfare of its residents front and centre and employs a dedicated vet team to look after the dogs in their care. I'm working with the team today as some of the dogs who've recently had surgery are getting a checkup. Ma'am, so this is Amos. Now, sweetheart. Amos is in today for her wound check, okay? She had um, mammary tumours when she came to us first, all along the side here. So we had to send her off. We had to have her chest x-ray to make sure there was no growth in her chest, which thankfully was clear. And um, she had extensive surgery done then to remove all the mammary glands on one side. You can see all along here. So it starts here, travels all the way up. So it was really extensive surgery. So we had to be very careful with her walks and that because it was so, so tight, you had to remove an awful lot of tissue. So we had the tumor sent away to the lab. So we're expecting the results back in the next day or two. So hopefully that will come back clear. If not, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. While Amos is doing well, she isn't out of danger yet, as the team wait anxiously for her tumour results. For now, though, she's being carefully monitored by behaviour specialist Sabrina, who will keep a watchful eye over her. She's going straight for her ball anyway. That's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> She might be a bit hot. It's warm out there. She it might is have very her. warm. We'll be plenty of water here for when she can just chill out for, for the afternoon with us here and play a little bit of ball. I catch up with manager Cash, who tells me about Bruno, a lovely old dog with a very sad tail. When his owner sadly passed away, Bruno lay down by his side and waited. It was days before he was found. He needs extra care and attention, and the specialist team have helped him along his journey. There was a lot of... Um visits to the vets to be diagnosed with the, the problem that he has with his back and his spine um, and it really took a lot of time for the carers to build up trust with them because we think in the home where he was he was probably just living with one person and obviously when they passed away it was very very difficult for him to adapt to new surroundings. And it's not easy for people to get hands on and that's why he's got a one-on-one -on -one care that just facilitates yeah. his care. He's one of our sponsor dogs here. And I know sponsor a dog is very dear to your own heart. Yeah, well it got me doing what I do <laughs> today. I um, Years ago I sponsored a dog at my local Dogs Trustry Home and Centre and um, just fell in love with the work of the charity and you know that we do never destroy a healthy dog and that really drew me to, to the, the ethos of the charity and I got a newsletter in the door saying exciting coming soon a dog's trust being built in Glasgow <laughs> and I thought like I just couldn't miss out on the opportunity, so got my letter in the post and and told them not to miss out on 
on me. <laughs> what does Sponsor Dog mean? Sponsor Dog helps look after a dog that's going to be in our care longer term. Might be because of a medical reason, might be because of, of a behavioural reason. And whilst the dog is in our care for that longer term, they're still receiving that ongoing training and rehabilitation. And so hopefully one day they can be rehomed. You know, I, I hope to be picking up the phone to you one day to tell you that Bruno has found a home. Because that would be wonderful, oh. you know, and all of our work is all about rehabilitating dogs and, and getting them that second chance that they haven't had. So. so it was a sponsor dog that got you into this charity? It was indeed. <laughs> Bruno is a very special dog and I've really bonded with him. He has also captured the heart of a young admirer. He even gets his own mail. Dear Bruno, I'm so happy to be your sponsor. When I heard your story, it made me so sad to think of what you went through and how miserable you must have been when your owner died. It makes me so happy to sponsor a dog like you. I really hope you like the picture I've drawn for you because you are so cute. Lots of love, Kira. Oh, that's so sweet. Is that the first one to come in? I think that's the very first one. Because of the generosity of a sponsor, Bruno will continue to get the medical attention he needs to thrive. And hopefully one day, he will find the perfect home. Little Amos was a stray who found her way into the centre. She was in urgent need of medical attention and required major surgery. She's been closely monitored by the behavioural team and I went to see how she was doing. So we have really great news on Amos. Um, she doesn't have cancer as it turns out, so that's absolutely super. Um, so she's gone up on our website, or she's going up on our website today, up for rehoming, um, and we want to find a really great home for her. And were you surprised at just how quickly she recovered? Because she's running around after all the balls. Yeah, you know, they, they do very well once, once you know, any pain or any discomfort is taken care of. They just do really, really well and, and they're just ready to go and they just want to move on and live life to the full. And that's the way dogs are and that's what we love about them. And do you know how she found herself in Dogs Trust? Because obviously she was loved. Absolutely. Like, I mean, I think, you know, she's had some wonderful interactions with people through her life. Like everything about her wants to spend time with people. And, you know, that tells its own story. Um, that, that means that she's had a really good life with people. So that says a lot for her past family, whoever they have been. Been. With Amos on the path to recovery, I'm hoping it's only a matter of time before she catches the eye of a new family. The centre received no government funding and are totally dependent on the generosity of dedicated dog lovers. Every donation is welcome and today John has just returned from an unexpected collection. Oh, wow. It was... All these items were going to be thrown out. So he decided to call Dogs Trust. Oh wow, that's cool. And he said that Dogs Trust would, would, could use them. As we unload the van, it's plain to see just how generous people are with their donations. John, what was the most unusual thing then that was donated? Well, uh, the, there was one day we got um, bags of duvets and blankets, but I could get an unusual smell. I didn't know what it was, and it was a Chinese takeaway. Thank God you said Chinese takeaway when you said it was an unusual smell. I, was, I didn't know where you were going. I, got, story. I just took out the carrier bag and there it was. And it was like a full Chinese takeaway. So obviously somebody didn't want it. <laughs> oh, I tell you. There is never a dull moment in the centre. And today something amazing is about to happen. Amos has been on an incredible journey, having had major surgery, has beaten cancer, and is now in recovery. Has she found her true owner? Right, well, we are obviously going to need to have a chat about where we go from here. So do you want to um, grab, grab your phone there and pop into the quiet room? I'm just going to get a few bits of information sorted and then I'll, I'll be on to That's a bit of a surprise. That doesn't happen all that often, especially not after four weeks. So all the information adds up. It's definitely his dog. He's clearly really quite excited that she's here. So. The next step now really is we need to have a chat with him because uh, she's not microchipped. Um, when she came into our care, um, we did have to do quite a lot of veterinary procedures on her as well. Our family have been at the wit's ends for the past months trying to find their beloved pet who 
Should have really had a chip there so we could locate the owners immediately, but... Lucky dog. I know. Family. And so our veterinary team here um, performed surgery on her to remove all the masses that were um, surrounding her mammary glands and around that whole area, but she's 100% recovered and she's absolutely fine. Um, we knew she belonged to someone because she's such a sweet little girl. Uh, she yeah, must have come from a family home. I look after. She's neutered now, she's yeah. vaccinated, she's microchipped. So somebody's overheard this whole story and they wish to remain anonymous, but they've just paid um, the adoption fee on your behalf. Yeah. Oh wait. <laughs> yeah, <so laughs> yeah. I didn't know that was happening at all. Oh wait. Tell them thanks for the noise. Can't meet them, can they? I think he wishes to remain anonymous. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You got your waterproof from Scarra, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long four weeks without this much loved family pet. And it's only a matter of moments before he's reunited with his beloved Mindy. We actually, I was terrified of all animals until my uncle got me that dog when I was a child. And he just landed home at the house one day and threw it in the house. My mother and I was going, like, get it out, get it out! <laughs> well, we have it then. My, uncle's, my uncle died, he passed away 10 years ago. So it's about 11 or 12 she is. Yeah. Mindy! <laughs> I'm so <laughs> glad that you've reunited. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. Now we can get another dog in your office. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, that's really yeah. sweet, yeah. Another happy tale wags out of the centre. Every effort is made to get all dogs, young and old, a loving home. And before I leave, I'm giving Bran a little extra help as she is elected as Dog of the Week. My time has come to an end, and I wanted to say goodbye to a very special dog before I go. Can you believe it's my last day? I cannot believe it's your last day already. It's been amazing to see so many dogs come in, but then so many dogs go home to their forever homes. It's richly rewarding. It really is. Seeing the dogs and the pups going out to their new homes, that makes it all worthwhile. And not just for the dogs, but the look on their new family's faces as well. I mean, dog ownership is a fantastic thing. For a family, it's great with children, teach them responsibility. And if you live by yourself, if you have a dog, you're never lonely. You go for a walk with this little girl here, guarantee five or six people have stopped, they'll have a chat. Everyone chats to you when you've got a dog. Flory, will you have me back? Yeah. Oh, I think that's a definite yes. I've had so many memorable moments and shared in some really special dog tales. There's been plenty of laughs, a few canine commotions, some tears of happiness and things that broke my heart. Sometimes it's been a 24-7 job, but it's all been worth it to see those happy tales. Every Dogs Trust resident deserves a fresh start and a new home. They're all waiting on their someone special. Maybe that's you.